All right, welcome to another episode of Out and About. I'm J.E. Cornwell. I've got a couple of guests today with me. Uh, this is a, a part one of a finance and insurance, or what we call the F&I of the rec business. And uh, today we've got a couple of, uh, well, your VPs, right? I mean, both of you are VPs of your uh, respected banks. I've got Matt Lanetta with uh, Central Bank of the Midwest and Sean Voth of Mazuma Credit Union. How you guys doing? How do you guys? Good to see y'all. All right, so I've got a little list of things that we're going to talk about today, and I kind of use this in my uh, everyday finance, but I'm fortunate to have you guys with us today. So what that looks like is kind of a uh, informational. So we get customers in here all the time that are questioning or have questions about financing on their RVs. So who better to ask than the guys at the bank and the credit union? So we're in a in a COVID world that we're living in today, right? And now we're really uh, struggling in some cases uh, with people to you know, come up with financing, others not so much. Um, but in my business, we're seeing a whole lot of people interested in buying campers. Is that what you guys are seeing? Yes, sir, true story. Um, we've really seen an uptick this year. I know Sean and I were talking about it earlier. Um, I think people, what you just said with the COVID, they realize things are different now. The normal vacations aren't going to be there. Um, the amusement parks, you want to wear a mask the whole time. And this is a nice alternative for them to get you back with the family, get you out. Um, so we've seen a major boost this year, uh, which has been great for us. So. Yeah. And, and going into the COVID and the pandemic, you, you never would have thought RVs would have been the, the thing that just would jump off the sheet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, RV uh, production and, and sales have been outstanding this year. Well, I'm, I'm glad for it. I hope it continues. So we, <laughs> well, you know, and I, we were talking a little bit earlier before we started this is, you know, traditionally we're going to have school time mid-August. You know, we see that, you know, downside in the business. We certainly saw, you know, fewer applications. I'm sure you guys both did too. But what was surprising is once we got past Labor Day, I started seeing applications again that we had not seen in the past, meaning, you know, on both the new and the used. Well, everything new right now coming out of the RV world is an order, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's three and four months, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we just did that grizzly bear with you guys and it was three months yep. after, you know, we'd originally been told. Mm -hmm. but. So the uptick, as you said, is I think going to mean we may see people camping in the winter months this year. Could be. Or at least yeah. traveling to, you yeah. know, South Texas or Florida or, you know, somewhere like that mm -hmm. to, which is kind of kind of different. And we're going to take that as well. Sure. I mean, I think too, it's the, they don't have to stay in a hotel. They don't have to worry about that issue. It's their own place. They can take it with them. Um, it's just, it's been wild to see that push this year, but um, we've been happy with it. Um, as far as um, what we call rec loans or recreational loans, and in most cases that's how it reports is a recreational loan, um, most of our customers are about the same. They're going to come in here with a little bit of knowledge of buying a car, mm -hmm. right? So, but we're trying to get them out of that that place, a lot of times that car is a need and not the want. Uh, and the difference is a, a pleasant customer, number one. <laughs> <laughs> so we all know that is the benefit of it. But um, give me a little idea what that looks like for you guys right now as far as, you know, we know uptick on, on REC is good, but the the customer that has been to the car dealership buying a, a car and financing that, tell them a little bit of the difference between auto buying and financing and RV buying and financing. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, um, and you kind of you mentioned it there. You know, the 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 auto industry is more of a of a need. They need that transportation back and forth. Uh, the rec uh, industry is it's it's that luxury, a little more luxury. So. There, it is a different buyer that, that is going, but also this year we're seeing uh, that that buyer, the, the RV is more of a, of a need in some, in some cases, you know, and so 
we're seeing a little bit different applicant and we do look at those applicants differently. But um, uh, overall, with uh, especially this year, the, the quality of the applicants that we have we've been, been receiving has been upper tier. And, and, there's, and, the, and the, the quality is there and so that's why we've had that uptick in our, in our uh, purchases where we, had, we weren't expecting this this year and it, it's been a nice surprise to get more involved into the RV lending. Uh, the terms are longer um, the, so we can keep them as a, as a member of the credit union longer and so it, it's, it's, been, it's been a good, good surprise for us. Yep, I totally agree with what Sean was saying. Uh, the biggest difference I would think with it is the term, is since we can go out way extended terms, 144, 180 months, sometimes that'll shock customers thinking, you know, I got a 15 year note here, it's like a mortgage almost, um, but it's a payment pain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a smaller payment, more manageable for them, and it gets them into it and gets them, especially with the new customer base that we are seeing, I agree with Sean on that as well, more families. So that if they start with a smaller unit, they can see if they really like yep. doing this. And we've seen a lot of trades um, this year where they've had a smaller unit, but they've upgraded to a bigger one because mm -hmm. they realize this is pretty sweet. The kids like it, the family like it. Uh, you yeah. can take the dog, you can take everybody with you. So it's the biggest difference I would say is that term. And yeah. since we can extend that term so far, um, that's something I think that throws customers for a loop, seeing yeah. those extended terms on there. Yeah. And I'm, it, it is an eye opener. I mean, people literally will sit there and they're like, ooh, okay. Um, and, and I find that that's a, when you get it to a payment factor, you know, especially in the Midwest, we know usually in the winter months, uh, you know, we're gonna hang it up. Mm -hmm. Not much use out of them. And even in the summer months, I mean, if you realistically on a national average, an RV and or a boat is 10 or 12 times in a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that, right? Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, taking a car out every day to work or, right. you know, whatever. Yeah. So there's a, a big difference in that. So it's easy to tell that customer, well, you know, in the winter months when you're not able to use it at all, it's better to make a $250 payment than it is a $500 payment, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah. so. And that's a true story, I mean, because yeah. we're coming on that season and so when it's cold and you're not using that RV, that's a hard thing to swallow if you got a $500 payment each month compared to 200, 250 Amen. payments. So. And you got to pay the guy to store it. Exactly. In most yeah. cases. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what, this year also, uh, we've seen a lot of difference in the age. You know, usually it was more of a retirement type mm -hmm. situation, retirement applications. Those applications, the, the, the buyers were uh, it, getting close to retirement age. Now we're seeing the youngers, the like, you, like you mentioned, the families getting into That's these point, and yeah. doing and doing uh, family vacations. Mm -hmm. And instead of this winter going to, to the ski resort or that sort, of, they might just be heading straight down south and going Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it has been a big change in our in the the, the application from a from a, the applicant standpoint. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'm I'm and I'm happy for that as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, be curious to find out what in two years what happens you know, oh, <laughs> we yeah, may see a the, flood of used stuff right, out there yeah. in the marketplace oh, but, yeah. um well let's let's just go from right there sean on the application portion of it i mean it's just as simple as that uh, i try to make my business model based on you know simplicity i don't want people to fear from filling out a credit app either on a piece of paper or on our website, um, you know, we go through all kinds of measures to run a credit application as both of you guys do in both of your banks and credit unions. Um, compliance in this industry is, is huge. Uh, the red flag portion of, uh, of what we go through is, is big, you know, uh, course you have to pay for it too mm -hmm. uh, you got to pay to play in this game and TransUnion and and all of those are are gonna have features that you know we pay extra to have that information as mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. do as well but as far as a credit application on the security part of it or the secure web apps uh, I mean they're very very popular very easy for all of us mm -hmm. and I know you guys have them on your websites as well um, let's talk about the compliance portion of it so when somebody talks to me about filling out a credit application and certainly that older customer, mm -hmm. that's gonna be the first thing they said, that, that pushback comes from them more than, than anybody else, sure. is they don't like giving up information like social securities, uh, even mm -hmm. birthdays, that type of stuff. They're reluctant. So, you know, I will make a 
quick spiel about telling them, uh, you know, we have a secured site. So we use a portal. Uh, our portal is App One. App One goes through a scrutiny of, of things that, that are required by both the customer and the dealer or the bank and the credit mm -hmm. union. Then we have a list of things that are, are told to us on every deal that we have to verify. But I know for a fact, you guys, because I get it in the mail, when once I've done a loan with you guys, uh, a personal loan, you guys send out that compliance uh, information that tells them mm -hmm. or tells the consumer that the information that they have provided will not and cannot be used by anybody only to obtain the credit that they had for that item, right? Or the yes, RV. Yep, correct. So let's talk about the compliance portion of that so people can feel comfortable about filling out a credit application online for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, like you'd said, there's portals. So um, App One Dealer Tracks is the one we use. Um, we also have agreements with the dealer uh, that we sign, the dealer signs, the bank signs, and that's helping protect. Um, as you said, compliance is a big deal in our world. Fair lending is a huge mm -hmm. hot button right now. Uh, to make sure that we're doing fairly across the board and everybody gets that equal opportunity um, for that look. Uh, but again, that security, we're not selling the information. We send our privacy policy out with our welcome letter when the loan's booked to let you know we're not giving up your information. We're not selling it to anybody. Um, that's just for that transaction that was done. We keep that in-house under lock and key. We're not giving that information out to anybody. Very secure. We've had no issues with it, no breaches or anything like that. Um, it's worked very well. We go, we get audited quarterly um, mm -hmm. on our side. So, I mean, they are all over us to make sure we are in compliance with everything, especially dealing with the indirect world since we are dealing with a third party per se. Um, we're not the ones controlling the transaction from the start. So there's a lot of safeguards to protect everybody involved, the bank, credit union, the dealer, the customer. We want to make sure that there's clear path, that there's no mistake in what we're trying to do, that we're not trying to take anybody's identity or do anything bad with it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it is nice. Sometimes it's burdensome at the bank getting audited all the time, but it's nice to have those checks in place to make sure we are doing right by everybody involved. Um, so that's how we kind of handle it on our side. Yep. In the, in the same way, you know, we're, we're, we're all regulated and, and right, we have to follow the same compliance uh, and regulations out there. And, and uh, from since everything has gone to an online service, obviously there's there's a lot of uh, security behind these portals that we use. Um, and in our case, we use the Cuddle uh, platform, which is a credit union dealer lending. Uh, and so that is a, our third party, which we have agreements with, and then the dealer has agreements with them. Um, and then, and then uh, when the application is submitted, of course, yeah, it goes through a completely uh, uh, screening to make sure that, you know, for, fraud's a big thing in this world right now. And so we, we always make sure that we are, are identifying the, that who, what loan we're looking at, where you, that's who we're doing business with. And that's obviously the dealer's point of view too. So we, we uh, also send out all the compliance information with all of our welcome packets. Uh, and then on our website, we also have all of our uh, uh, disclosures out there. So you, anybody could either go out there and look at what we do for our privacy notices and, and so forth. So it is uh, uh, very open and, and to, to uh, get all the information that you have. But uh, one thing that it, it is one of the safest way to, to, to submit applications and, and have that control. I agree. Yep. I absolutely agree. I mean, you, you're going to talk to some people who just never, ever do it mm -hmm. yeah. and, and and I come across that and then you that know, old school new school thought right that's yep. right that's yeah, why we still have paper apps right I mean right, exactly yeah. why right younger um, generations growing up on computers and they're used to it but yeah, yeah the my uh, mom on their phone the I, way, I, mean, yeah, I can I can watch somebody do an app on their phone a young person it mm -hmm. just blows me away right <laughs> I can't even toggle that fast and they're like you know okay yeah. well, yeah. Oh, I did get that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. well, that is good stuff. And I think as far as, you know, buying anything, I mean, if you're doing a credit app on anything, I don't care what the purchase is, you know, you're going to, if there's, if it's credit involved, that means you guys are in on the deal. I'm in on the deal. And then of course the credit reporting agencies, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Um, all of us sitting at this table, our go-to is TransUnion. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, I believe 80% of the rec industry is TransUnion. 
we use portals in this business and it makes everything so much easier for all of us. It'd be really nice if you guys all used app one, so I didn't have to resubmit, but you know, <laughs> I'm old, I got fat fingers. Edit and, that too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, portals in our industry is, uh, is big because we're, we're talking about this secure portion of a, of a credit app and how it gets from me or from our, our customer to me, to you guys, and it's done through a portal. Uh, so that means we load up the information that the customer has provided us about them. We then marry that to the collateral of uh, the RV, let's mm -hmm. say, and put in the information on that collateral. Uh, and then in my case, I will structure that deal based on the terms that I've come to agree with with our customer. That is then sent to the portal with, uh, with Central Bank through Dealer Track with uh, Mizuma through Cuddle. Both very much the same, um, with the exception of you. Your mm -hmm. bank doesn't do any um, uh, smart funding yet, but um, Not I, yet, we're getting there. I, I know, I've heard you've said that to me now for about four years. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> um, but, uh, and it used to be good with you until you got busy. So <laughs> we're both getting hammered. Right. So, I'm I'm I had to throw that in there. Right. We knew it was coming. Right. Uh, but I understand we're in a busy world. But the portals help us because not only does it provide uh, for a dealer, it provides the the better way to go down the checklist. Mm -hmm because when I run everything through Cuddle or through Dealer Track, it's going to, you know, put me in the boxes that I need to place the information for your buyers to see in order to make their decision. So everything is so much easier. Then of course that yields the decision mm -hmm. based on that customer, that collateral, etc. But uh, ultimately what we find as a dealer is, you know, once we get the approval, um, in some cases, um, your guy, holy cow, he is good. Ken, mm -hmm. I don't know where you found him, but boy, I'm telling you, he's good. Thank uh, you. Keep him. Um, <laughs> I mean, and, and it is. Sometimes y you can miss things, but really there's only three parts to every, every structure. I mean, right, you got a customer, their credit profile, you've got the collateral, and you got the means to pay it back. For the most part, these portals that we use make all of our lives so much easier. Oh, yeah. um, so let's expand on that. So let you talk about dealer track real quick. Mm -hmm. Dealer track, of course, been around forever. Cuddle, not so much, mm -hmm. but it's certainly um, dealer track based. I mean, you know, yeah, the sure. the old school of, uh, you know, Reynolds and Reynolds and, and those mm -hmm. were how they developed. But go ahead and, and talk so about that. So on the dealer track side, uh, a big portal, dealer track and route one. So when the dealer submits the app, he fills it out and submits it to us. It comes through on our side. It's got the DTI, the debt to income calculated, pulls their credit, has that loan to value listed as well. Um, so we go through, we check and make sure we do have our parameters and our policy procedures to keep in line. Um, so we make sure we check all those that they were in line. We look at job longevity, residency longevity, if they've got cash down. Um, and then, you know, the nice thing for us is it's not an automated decision the human eyes still look at it. Um, so, cause you might see that they had one blip somewhere and everything else is clean. So that way we can look at it and go, okay, there was just a little hiccup. So it's not that big of a deal. When it's the system decision, it's more black and white. Um, and that way we, to me, we always need that set of human eyes to look at it and there could be a story there or we could reach out to the dealer and what's going on with this and if they can interview the customer. Um, so it makes it very efficient. Um, I think the speed to the response time is a lot quicker instead of having to fax an application over, input it, and then respond right. back. It's quick. I mean, we can decision usually in under you know five to ten minutes. That way, the dealer's got that decision. That way, the customer's not waiting on us or the dealer, and they can finish up the deal and they've got that answer. We talk a lot about efficiency in our mm -hmm. in our shop and how we are are we efficient, and that helps our efficiency. Mm -hmm. We know that we want the quicker we can get an answer. Sometimes, if we're first on answer, we might get that deal simply because we responded first. But that's helping the dealer set the tone with the customer and get them going right away. So very slick procedure. Um, it's great um, when it comes in. We do have an audit decision feature 
we can't auto approve auto decline. They haven't turned it on on the RV side, more on the auto side. Uh, but again, I like the, the fact that we, as the human eye, can look at it too and, mm -hmm. and differentiate and see if there's you know something that there's there's something here. There's a deal here. We just got to figure out how to get there. Yep. So uh, that's kind of how our dealer track works on our side of the world. Yeah, and and on the cuddle, it's basically the same thing, just a different portal. Um, uh, with Cuddle, you you have access. Uh, so when a credit union, you when you uh, are on Cuddle, you have access to not only Mazuma but other credit unions that are uh, doing that RV type lending. But uh, same thing when when you submit the application over. We have a uh, our uh, loan origination system. It goes through a decision manager, and we set that up and we tweak that all the time uh, to to get those auto approvals. Uh, uh, set up or it'll, it'll counter it back if it doesn't quite meet it thing. So we we have that uh, capability uh, to, to use. And then if it doesn't pass uh, uh, the decision manager, then it does go to a, a humanize our underwriters who, who review the application, look for those type of things that you were just speaking of. And, and, and uh, it does do all the calculations for you. It makes it real life and easy. Back, back when I first started, you know, I had to do it with my pencil, you know, and it, <laughs> it makes it nice. You just do it. Everything's, you can take a quick look at it and get that decision back to you quickly so that uh, uh, we, we have a, a, a motto there that we want to make everything fast, simple, easy. Um, and we even with the Cuddle uh, platform, you can find out if any of our members uh, were pre-approved. You know, you, so you can search That's for that. True. Yeah. You can search for, for if they, once they give you the proper information, you can search up and get the pre-approval set up and then you can claim that app and you don't even have to do anything else that except nice. for submit the, submit the information. So uh, yeah. with the collateral and so forth. So it does make it a lot easier for our members to go in, sit down, get it taken care of. And then they go on and, you know, live there with their new trailer and then you and I deal with the money transfer. <laughs> and so it, 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 makes it, it makes it real nice, easy, secure. Yeah. Uh, everybody has passwords, logins, and, it, you know, it's, it's very secure on that side of things. So. I, I'm a big fan. I mean, because I started doing this job when uh, everything was done by, we faxed everything over. Mm -hmm. Back when our decisions in our trans unions came over on thermal fax paper. Oh, man. <laughs> so that goes back a while. Oh, man. Um, most people that are buying, you know, an RV, they're probably not really going to be too involved in this process. They want to know, you know, bottom line where their payments are going to be but this is kind of to give the consumer the people that are buying these or wanting to finance these rvs a little bit of knowledge on what goes on once an application has been submitted mm -hmm. so these are the reasons that we ask for that um and matt you touched on you know the what the buyer's looking at you know uh when he gets a deal sent through dealer track so, of course, score. Score is, you know, undeniably going to be the key component on every deal. I like both of your lending uh, institutions because a lot of times score doesn't give you, and it can't all the time. Um, yeah, it's going to be a huge barometer in how we get things bought, but a lot of times there's a story behind it. The three big, the credit score, debt to income, loan to value. Um, we look at that credit bureau to make sure that um, it's all, it's lining up, everything looks good. Might be a little bit of a lower score that might impact the rate since we base our rates off of the score in the year of the collateral, uh, but we can get the deal done. Um, debt to income, their capacity to repay, as Jay mentioned. Uh, we want to see that stability. We have a cutoff about 42% on that debt to income level to make sure people aren't being overextended on it. Um, not a hard, fast rule, but that's kind of the line we draw at the beginning. Loan to value, it depends on the credit tier of the customer, um, the strength of the deal. We can extend over 100%. We could go below 100%. And with Central, you guys, you'd like to see people in around that mid 700s and above, right? And that, and that qualified A tier customer. That's the qualified A yeah. tier, yeah. We look below that, you know, I mean, some of our 650 to 700, that's some of our good, you know, there's good paper to be bought there. Um, you know, again, that human eye is a huge part looking at that. Customers have money down. Um, that's a big deal too. They got skin in the game. Um, they're commit. They're showing a commitment right there where there might be some other weaknesses in the deal. If they got a strong down, they're showing that commitment to the deal. Um, and that way we're hoping that they won't walk away from it by putting good money down. They're just throwing money away at that point. So, um, yep, that's kind of how we look at it on our side. You know, and, and basically the same thing. I mean, under, underwriting is underwriting and, and you know, uh, you know, we're in the risk business. You know, we, 
so we, we have to price for that risk and, and uh, that's where your credit score kind of comes into play. You know, you have a higher credit score, you're going to pay a lower rate. You have, you've had some issues in the past, you're going to pay a higher rate, but there, uh, uh, loan to value is something that we look at. Um, uh, we can, like he mentioned, we can finance over the value of it if you have a good, good quality credit. Otherwise, we might need a little money down, a little more investment uh, to get a little bit more security in that. Um, and, and we look, of course, DTI. Uh, our DTI ratios uh, depend on credit. You know, we range from 40 up to 50 percent. You know, but uh, those are just guidelines that we look at. Uh, we, we want sometimes, you know, uh, when reviewing a deal, sometimes we have to protect the customer from themselves, <laughs> you know, yeah, and, absolutely. and, and, and yeah. we have to be the, the ones that look at it from the, th uh, the uh, third object and, instead of that shiny new RV that they want and, and so forth. We've got to make sure that, they, that they're going to be put in a position to succeed and not fail right away. And if, if we put them in a position to fail, that's our fault. You know, we, we need to make sure that we're, we're putting those people into a, a position that, that they, they can succeed. And so that's why we review those applications, look at those uh, criterias, and then make a sound decision. To, uh, from, and we also, we look at payment to income. Payment to income is a big thing for us uh, to make sure that they can afford yeah. that payment um, and, and within all the rest they have going on in their world. So we, we look at those type of uh, uh, scenarios as well as if they, yeah, Perfect. If they're if they're a member, they have strong uh, accounts with us. Uh, they've paid us well in the past, but maybe have had some other issues come up. Yes, we're still going to help try to help them out and try to figure out how we can put a deal together. That's good. And and I'll both of you guys, both of uh, the people that work for you at both of your institutions are are good about that. As far as being a dealer, I always want to know, and you know, it's easy to just put a decline on there, you know, if it's a system type deal, I want to know that I've got an opportunity to what we call a rehashed deal, you know, to go over it again to some specifics that were maybe not put on paper that weren't seen there. Um, but what you were saying is, you know, keeping, you know, somebody from overextending them, helping them to not do that. So I'll get a call back from one of your guys or one of your guys stating, you know, this is just too much. Would relook at a lower yeah. price, at, you know, let's get this guy a camper, but let's get him something realistic that he can, you know, manage. So that's a great point. So, and that's a way to treat your customers knowing that the ultimate goal is to keep them around, right? right, right. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, then real quick on the LTV, loan to value is big. It's huge for us when we buy these things or when we get them new, it's a huge factor, obviously. We're talking about margins on my side, right? And we're talking about trying to keep you guys secured in your loans on your side. Um, but loan to values are simple on the new stuff. The MSO, uh, which, you know, uh, statement of origin. I don't know if you guys have ever even seen a statement of origin, have you? You probably haven't, have you? I, I, I it was a long, long time ago. And statement of origins were only, I think, about how they got into the country. I'm pretty sure. But to this day, an MCO is all, everybody calls it the same thing. We all call it and refer to it as MCOs, right? Or MSOs, I'm sorry, but a, a manufacturer certificate of origin. Uh, and with that means that they have a already been accepted in, a, in our government or in the United States as a manufacturer. Right. And you have to be certified. The other part of that is an invoice. That invoice is, of course, based on, again, credit profiles, where they stand there, um, you know, what they're going to get, that invoice number. So invoice is always a little different with each and every lender. Um, so invoices that have, in most cases with RV, every RV that you get uh, from a manufacturer comes with anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 of shipping, you know, that the dealer is responsible for. Uh, there's other things that come into play so that when that original camper invoice was set up, it was based off of the accessories that were added to that unit. 
well, usually as the year goes along two and three times through the year, depending on where you are, usually fourth quarter is always good for a dealer because now my discounts grow extremely high. So I'm looking at that same invoice price, but it's looked at differently. Some lenders will cap your discounts and say, okay, well, your invoice is your invoice and we're only going to go here. Um, so that loan to value does vary a little bit on a new. On the used side, we have uh, the NADA. Uh, of course, the NADA was a, created for the auto industry, National Auto Dealers Association. However, they're in everything, boats, motorcycles, RVs, of course. Um, we use them every day. I send them to both of you guys whenever I send in a deal. Do you have my NADA? So um, NADA is probably the best it's ever been right now as far as i can i mean it used to be you know i still call it left side and right side to this day mm -hmm. i will never ever because i had the book i only right. only had the book right so you always dealt with in your guys's world the left side yep. and so we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second but nada is a um it's based on uh national sales uh, all over the country, um, but it's split into four regions, I believe. The NADA is the go-to for just about every lender, I think, Yeah. right? I mean, there's it's a lot of stuff out there, yeah. but it's yeah. it's the go-to. But that's de that develops a, a price based on a, a base unit um, on an average sales, and then it also offers you the accessory packages mm -hmm. And I believe it's the same accessory package on every RV, if I'm not mistaken. It could differentiate a little bit depending on the model. We've seen that, but that's no. the accessory package is a big deal. Yeah, uh, to make so, sure we have that on there. But on the NADA, certain amounts are done differently. In the credit world industry, period, not just your credit union, but you know the credit unions are notorious of using a retail value which is going to be that right side versus in the bank industry, they're using that left side. So let's talk about as far as a loan to value with you on an invoice and or an NADA, what you're trying to, to accomplish there by using that as the barometer for gotcha. that loan to value. So on a new, we go off the invoice because that kind of gives us the whole picture of that unit. So it's got the different options that are put on there, the packages. Um, again, that's basing that on our credit history of the customer, their credit tier. So we're not overextending them. You know, like Sean said, he said that great. Um, we want to make sure that we put them in a position to succeed, that they're not flipped in that unit, they're not upside down, and that they understand that. Because we get a lot that if we counter a deal, the customer will get upset because we didn't meet that full call. And we're trying to explain, well, it came in at 150% loan to value. You walk off the lot with that, and that's going to go even higher. So we're just trying to make sure we're putting you in a good position, the bank, um, you know, the whole way around. On a used one, we look at that on the NADA, that average used value. Um, the key with that too is, is to know what package is on there so we can include that on there if it's not included already. Um, what additions are on that RV? Is there things, because these little things do add value to it. We just have to be careful that we're not adding every little piece on there, um, you know, for that. But we want to make sure we're giving the fair value to what's placed on that unit. Um, so we want to make sure we do that accurately based on what's on there. Um, and, you know, on more on the auto side, we get in the power booking deal where they just list every freaking option on there. Um, then you double check a website, go, oh, really? I don't see that. Two motors? There. Yeah, it's wow, interesting. that's weird. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, pack, the diesel is what we get a lot. Yeah. It's got a diesel engine. Right. And so it's, well, that's great. And it does add massive value. But if that truck falls apart, I just got a diesel engine. I don't think I'm going to get 30 grand right. out of my right. diesel engine here. Right. So RVs is different because every part of that is going to be used when they're out doing it, the slot. The, the, yeah. the information in there. So even if it's a resale to somebody else, they're still going to be using that stuff. So we want to make sure that valuation is proper in there. Um, and then again, it's based on our credit tiers and then where we can, we got them marked at and if we need to extend over that, um, you know, based on the overall structure of the deal. But that's kind of how we look at our loan to values with invoice and, and used. Yep. And, and for us, it's, it's uh, the same situation, but it, we just use a different number. So uh, on the new, we'll use the, the MSRP. Um, and then on the, on the uh, used, we use the NADA retail value. Um, and so we kind of look at, at uh, what, you're, you know, what the dealer is actually selling the vehicle or the RV for um, and compare it to that number. So you can kind of get gauge on what type of uh, uh, equipment it, uh, it does have and make sure that the, uh, what we're lending out matches within that, that, uh, that uh, RV. And, and you know, 
to, to that being said, depending on credit tiers, yes, that's, it's going to fluctuate. You know, we either need to be below that uh, NADA retail or MSRP or we can go above. You know, especially if somebody's trading in something, carries a little extra balance, uh, we were able to do that. Or if they want to add something to the, to the unit that might cost some money, we were able to do that and keep those within, uh, within our guidelines. So, so because collateral is just it, it's, it's collateral. Uh, uh, we're basing the loan off of the person. You know, we're not basing it off of exact collateral, Great but point. we do have to stay within um, some ranges to, to his point. We have to protect the, the, the customer and member as well to say, you know, uh, I'm not going to put you into this because you're 200%. <laughs> uh, you're, you're financing way, way too much on it. You, we've got to scale it back, and this is why, you know. Uh, and so uh, we look at those two different numbers, and then we price for that. You know, we, the, uh, we price for that risk of if we're going to be uh, uh, over that value, yeah, that might be reflected in, the, in that interest rate because we, we do have some risk out there. And so that, uh, that's how we view those numbers. Um, and and it, RVs are, are, are a tough one because you do have a lot of equipment that, that goes on it and, and we have to identify and make sure that we are uh, getting the correct equipment that's on the So let's, let's touch on that as far as uh, loaning on a different value versus say what you're loaning on. So, you know, I guess on that risk factor, you're looking at maybe a little more in depth because, I mean, you don't want your recovery losses to be, you know, right. substantially higher than his because now you're loaning out more on that unit based on that loan to value. Right. So you're you're looking at it a little bit differently then yeah. because yeah, we of look that. At, yep, we yeah. look at it a little bit differently and, and, and our percentages are based off of those, you know, and we always do uh, reviews of... Uh, of our losses you know we're going to have losses like I say we're yeah, in the yeah. risk business if we don't have losses we're not doing our job that's yeah. it right and, on you know right and on. so, yeah. so we have to have that and, and and but we we monitor that and then we can we, we adjust a, as we need to and then that's why you see rates go down up and down and yeah. the last time that customer walked in here and I got that low rate well that might not be around anymore yeah. <laughs> you know because you have to price for for that risk and so uh, and we look so loan to value does play a part in that, you know, yeah. and so if I'm looking at MSRP or, or retail value, that could be three or four, five thousand dollars different than what he's looking at. And so we have to make sure that we're yeah. we're in that, well in that unit. Right. Right. Um, moving on to the structure of a deal. Obviously, you know, we've taken the customer now. We've got this credit profile from this customer. We've got this collateral now. It's got a, uh, a good loan to value that we want to do. So now we're going to structure this deal. So we've got a sale price. We kind of work this magic with this customer saying, you know, you can't live without this because here's the best sale price in town. Well, you know, however you get to that sale price, that's the sale price and you've agreed to it in a, in a buyer's order, purchase order. So with that structure, we as uh, dealers and lenders, we, we have terminologies. The front end, of course, is what we consider uh, the sale price. Uh, and that sale price can be added is sales tax. Sales tax, and I'm going to mm -hmm. have you touch on that here in a minute, Matt, uh, is a huge factor when you're talking about, you know, uh, $40,000, $50,000 RVs and up. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you just saw the spacecraft as you guys pull up here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine the sales tax on that baby? Right. Uh, so sales tax, uh, TTNL or tax title lien, uh, those are also fees that um, state dealers, lenders, etc. they will have on uh, a loan. Uh, those are also put on the front or added to the sale price. Um, we have in both states, um, we're sanctioned by the state for dealers anyway. Um, when we do a loan, uh, we offer an administrative fee, not a doc fee, mm -hmm. but an administrative fee uh that basically means we're doing all the paperwork with those states so we get the state will allow us we as a dealer decide to go on the low end i think in missouri it's 4.99 and in kansas 9.99 mm, yeah it's up there it's high yeah and 
they're the car dealers are getting it. Yeah. But we're at 199, and I think that's kind of common in, yeah, in RVs, common. right? Yeah. Uh, nobody wants to jump off the roof there with that big number, but um, but it is a fee. I mean, we're we're paying to get these things done. Uh, it's part of being funded through you guys. Is these things have to be in place? This is the front end. That that then yields a number that is you know based again on this loan to value that we just talked about and again based on the customer's credit profile or what that percentage looks like for him on the back end or the uh the additionals that we will call that um you guys operate a little differently in this world um i know matt you're uh, with your bank um pretty commonplace i think you use a percentage mm -hmm. based off of the amount of the loan uh, or the amount of the sale price. In most mm -hmm. cases, or, or that's how that's done. Um, and when we talk about that, we will talk more about that uh, with Brandon uh, when we talk warranties and gaps and, and the product line. But the back end uh, would be considered the warranty, uh, gap protection, uh, tire and wheel coverage, mm -hmm. uh, any maintenance uh, mm -hmm. programs. Now, even though maintenance that we sell is a cancelable item. Mm -hmm. Do both of you consider maintenance a front-end ad regardless? It would be a back-end for us. Back-end for both of you? Yeah. If, it, if it's a cancelable product, we consider it back-end. Yep. Okay. That's but, the rule, yeah. But that again, same thing with the front-end based on that uh, ratio or that percentage of loan to value. Now that's separate from that, right? Because we're talking about, in your case, the sale price, mm -hmm. and in your case, you have uh, what is the so the back end? We, we'll do twenty five percent of the sale price. Oh, it is, or or up to six thousand. Okay, that's so right. So we have a we have a, a, a hard line there. there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and and then but we we have that in there uh, just for some some protection, right? Uh, to make sure that uh, 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 the products that are being added onto the back end isn't exceeding a certain level, right? But uh, we, it's a guideline, if, if, and then we can make exceptions beyond that on certain units. Obviously, there's certain units out there that might uh, have a warranty that costs $6,000, yeah. you know? And so we can, I, then that's where we talk, and we say, yep, that, we're, we're okay with that. And so as long as, uh, but we do have to have some sort of limits in there, you know, uh, just to, to make sure that there's, uh, people are staying within the limits that we're comfortable with on putting on the back end because we are, we do have very high uh, uh, loan to value limits on the front end, you know, um, so uh, we want to make sure that we're not, we're, we're in that same type yeah. of category. So we'll, we've got kind of two parts of, of the loan or the structure of the loan, the front end and the back end. Uh, ultimately, you want to touch the front end a little differently because it's based on loan to value, but ultimately both of them combine. You're not going to max out over a certain number or a percentage of that loan to value. Um, so what I was referring to earlier on, you know, like uh, the sales tax portion of this, the states are done differently where we are, right? We live in Kansas City. There's a state line that runs down the middle of the city and Kansas is done a whole lot different. But as a Missouri dealer, it's not any different to me. Mm -hmm. They still get the question, do you want me to put this sales tax on your loan? Missouri, obviously, is that same thing, and, and the difference is that in Kansas, as a Kansas dealer, it's an automatic. Right. Yeah. So it, you walk into your DMV and it's already been charged on to that deal. So in Missouri, it's not the case. Right. And we, we talked about this a little bit before, but the sales tax on these numbers are, are big, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. so as far as a loan to value, if we're talking about a $50,000 RV, it does have to be done a little differently, right? right? Because yeah, right. you guys have a cap on, on your recreational loan side. That means it has to be done within, you know, the means that your, your rate sheet provides. Mm -hmm. So sales tax. Sales tax in both states means that if they want to put that on there, they have the option and you're going to allow it. Correct. Right? So Correct. go ahead and touch on that. Um, so we deal obviously in both states too, Kansas, Missouri. Kansas, I will say I like the best because you said it's automatically included. So there's no question about it. Um, on the Missouri side, it's awesome to hear that you still ask that question to everybody because we see a lot that they don't think about it. 
Um, it's not included. Some dealers don't mention it to them. So then they go register it and they're told, oh, by the way, you owe sales tax at 3200 bucks. What? I, I right. What? So it's one of those, it's the education too. You pay sales tax on everything. So you pay, if you went to Starbucks this morning, you paid sales tax on a cup of coffee. Why wouldn't you pay sales tax on this? Um, so having it financed in, again, with our cap, if that sales tax would carry it over, we'd approve that because we know that sales tax is being taken care of. They're going to go register that bad boy and do it legit like it needs to be. So, yes, we will always make that an exception if you're putting that sales tax in there. Um, so, I mean, that way it's all encompassed. They're, they're good to go. They know when they go in there, they can provide proof that they the deal is financed with the sales tax. They've taken care of it, register it, put our lien on there, and we're all living a good life at that point. Um, so it's it, that's the, the fight that we see a lot is people don't think about it because they're happy with their unit. They're excited. They're fired up to go camping, and they don't think about it or on a car until they go register it. And then they, that's a cold bucket of water poured on them when they're not thinking about it. Uh, so Indeed. it's something, you know, to do that homework because then yep. the dealer might get the call. You didn't tell me about this. Why did you? <laughs> then we get the call, you know, and it's like, well, I mean, that's, again, you feel bad saying you pay yeah, Everybody's tax getting everything. that review. Every, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, so it's it's just one of those things to key to think about. You know, we always tell customers to do some homework, you know, I mean, think about that yeah. um, before you go in there. And I mean, I think the dealer would appreciate that you're thinking about it. Um, but it's nice to know, again, that we do have good dealers like Jay that do ask that question. Hey, you it's know, it's simple it's, for me because because I, I mean, and the rule of thumb, and it varies a little bit. If you're on the, on, on the smaller loans, it's, it's going to vary. But, you know, $10 per thousand on a loan, on mm -hmm. a note, that's going to yield a, a, a difference in the payment. At, you know, a $250 payment to know that you're, especially a guy that is being required to put money down, mm -hmm. right? I mean, right. you know, so let's kind of lessen that a little bit and you got this uh, maybe 10% investment that you're putting into this loan. Um, and now I'm certainly on the Kansas side, I'm gonna ask for 10% more because that's what sales tax is gonna be basically. Right. Sure. And so with that, I mean, uh, if, if we've got a customer and, and they're kind of teetering on that, and I, that's what I'll say. I say it's going to be about ten dollars per thousand. So if you're at forty thousand dollars, you're you know looking at about forty bucks on that payment. You want to pay it in a monthly payment, and you know we can right. stretch this loan out. Remember, and right, right. so that's why. That's, and yeah. I I would say probably eighty percent. Yeah, and we also see if they have down payment, and that's that's sales tax. Take that down payment, let them go use that to pay their right. sales tax and then we'll restructure it from there. Yeah, that's um, a great point you know, too. So we want to make sure that we're, we're looking at these avenues yeah, for the customer and thinking about it. So, um, you know, again, it's it's the discussion. It's all, it's not a cut and dry deal. You got to look at it all and make sure that we're doing right Making by a good deal. And making that's a good right. deal, yeah. You know, we have, in my opinion, one of the better warranties out in the marketplace. Um, they touch on a lot of different things. Everybody hates warranties, by the way. I mean, everybody. I mean, I get more pushback on warranties because all they've ever purchased was a car and they got screwed on a car. They never used it or when they did, it wasn't covered. Uh, or they bought a refrigerator and the only thing covered was the compressor. <laughs> right, right, right? I right. mean, who, on an RV, you're gonna use a warranty. It's hard for me to get that across to some people, right? But we're, we find it every day, people call up and on new stuff. Mm -hmm. You've got a manufacturer's warranty that's gonna apply and you're gonna to need to use it. But there's so many other components on that that aren't covered from the manufacturer, especially in the RV world, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. you got a structure from the manufacturer on a, on a domestic, it's three years. And that's not going to touch any of the media, the TVs, or, I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking, even the AC units on these units, they're, they're building out of Elkhart or 12 months. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you think about using that 10 or 12 times in a year, and then you get someplace for the first time and it's hot and you crank that thing on. Well, I mean, it just happens. So, right. Absolutely. but with... With Mizuma, um, I know we have had some customers that um, have come back to us uh, after the fact and said, well, you know, if we add that on, uh, as a matter of fact, this wasn't uh, with me, it was with another dealer, but we ended up having to go in and redo the deal to get his warranty on there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that deal mm -hmm. or not, but it was, um, but 
when I tell them, I said, okay, well, your option is you can buy this warranty at this price, right? Because it's new to me and it's going to be new to you. But as soon as you roll it over that curb, it's a whole different game, right? right. Because now it's a, a used deal and blah, blah, blah. So warranties we try to push, we try to get as much as information to the customer as we can. I've always been that, that guy, I mean, that is trying to sell a warranty. There's certainly a margin. The dealers make a margin on their insurance products. I've never hid that ever. Uh, you guys, you sell it and you're direct. I mean, that's part of the, the deal, but I put a price out there on our warranties that is more reasonable than just about anybody. Yeah, we're going to make a margin, but here's something, here's a need that you're going to have. So when we sell warranties, we, we make sure that a customer knows what they're getting into, that they're going to need it, and that my lenders are going to allow that on their loan. Mm -hmm. Gap policies. Gap is a guaranteed asset protection uh, is what that stands for. So with that, uh, in the car industry, pretty prevalent, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Absolutely. In the RV and or boat world, it is not based on loan to value. We've already discussed loan to values based on invoice and NADAs. A lot of times, especially with money down, we are so under that. I have more issues getting to that 70 or 80% number that you guys put out than I do on the capital or cap side of that, right? But talk about gap and, and how you guys think gap on when you see gap policies on a on a loan personally i like it you know if they're oh, yeah. they don't, they're not in a good position loan to value wise like you said or have some skin into it that's helping protect that in the case of something happening that total loss and that way they're not left holding the bag and we're the bank calling them saying you still owe me six grand that's where that product will fill that gap which is why it's called gap mm -hmm. um, i would always recommend that you know if you're not in a good position that would be the one product i would get all the time mm -hmm. um, for that extra protection same with the warranty in an rv you know people like you said we talked about earlier they got the car in their mind and rv has so many different pieces to yeah. it so many different things that could potentially go wrong you just spent this money you just invested in this why would you not want to protect your asset like that you know what i mean especially an rv um there's so many little things that could pop and then they come back to you sorry it wasn't under warranty right or you got to get a fix and that's going to cost you out of pocket 1200 bucks when you could have bought that warranty and covered it for 10 extra bucks a month five extra bucks a month mm -hmm. um, but they think of the car and i got burned before i didn't need to use it Probably not, mm -hmm. but an RV, you're going to need it. Yeah. You know, if you're using that yeah, RV, you're going to need it. Um, but yeah, both, I, Gap for sure. That was something, yeah. whenever I have friends or, you know, people come up to me, I always tell them, you need it. You yep. need to make sure you get it. If you're not putting good money down and in a, like 60% or lower, 70%, you need Gap yep. just in case you never know. It's totally worth it. What ratio of RV loans? Well, in, in your case, you do both. So on your rec side, what number would you put as far as the loans that you see that have um, gap on them? Oh, I would probably say, because we do, and like you mentioned, a lot of times we do a lot of uh, RVs or boats, they do put a lot of money down sometimes, you know, and then they, they don't necessarily need that yet. But uh, uh, overall, I would say 70% of our loans come across with gap on it. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah, and I'd, in fact, from our, from our direct side as well, the, from, uh, and when I, from when I'm talking about the direct, from the member that's coming in and just doing On the, the rec side, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So they, they we, we, are, we, we get at least 70% gap coverages on, on those as well. Um, because that is, it's a big, it's a big uh, protection, especially on the, with the terms that you're, you're, you're putting these loans out there for. You're putting these out there for 15 years. There's a lot right. can happen in 15 years, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and that value of that RV is going to be like the stock market. It's going to go up and down. Right now they're high, you know, but uh, down, uh, uh, there's been times where, uh, you know, you, the, the values drop, and if that's when, that's when the accidents happen, right? Yep. Um, and so, so Gap, I, I totally agree. That's why we are talking about front-end backing. That's why we allow you to put those into the financing to protect yeah. our collateral, and you're in you. So yep. uh, same with the with the warranties. That way you're not calling me and asking me for a five thousand dollar loan because you need to fix your 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 RV. Uh, and then now you got your RV payment. Now you got your new loan payment, you yep. know, for to, to fix it. And so 
Um, we totally uh, allow uh, the, the, the warranties, the gaps, the tire and wheel protections, put those all on the, uh, in the financing, protect yourself, uh, because basically you're insuring yourself from any future expenses. So what we call yeah. them is collateral protections. That's, yeah. And That's I think exactly that, right. that the, the auto thought in their mind, they're used right. to that, that grind. It's hard to overcome hard to that, overcome it really that. is. It is, and it is a different, it, this is a completely different. Completely 70%, different yeah. Yeah. holy hell. That's, That's why, too, they should do your homework. It's a different product. Yep. It's not like an auto, they're not going to be presented the same right. as an auto would be. Yeah. You know, this is a fun thing. This is a nice thing. This is something they want to come and get. Well, and I don't know about on your direct side, uh, you know, in the car finance world I did for years, and even somewhat in the, in the motorsport, power sport, you know, we we called it menu selling. You know, you, you've got a suite of these products and you can get different things and different discounts on them and blah, blah, blah. But uh, not so much in the RV world. I mean, number one, there's only, like you see, a handful of these items. Now, if you've got a guy, in my case, um, we offer a a protection, a poly protection. Um, it's a nano protection. It's a... Uh, just a, what we refer to as the paint and fab in, in our industry, mm -hmm. right? So this is a protection for the interior exterior. Now, it's an extra product, but I mean, I'm gonna tell you in five years on the rec side, um, maybe at that 10%, right? Mm -hmm. My warranty penetration, I'm, I'm right at that 80%. That's how much on the rec side I, I push the warranties. Mm -hmm. Um, gap, I'm going to say I'm, I'm 50, 50. Yeah. I really am. And I, I, I would like to be at 70. <laughs> um, gap's not a lot. I mean, you know, in both your guys' cases, I think you're 850 and you're just under a thousand. So, I mean, that, that's not a, a payment bump right. hardly at all. Right. Yeah. So with that, I mean, yeah. And, and my biggest battle I think now is on the gap side is both you guys require insurance on your loans, as you should. We have a comp and a collision uh, that is required. So you get these guys, uh, the State Farm guy, the American Family guy, and they're like, oh, we got this great gap policy. It's only 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, you start reading, and I'm guessing that's why you're putting in the additional pages of that whole gap policy now, because that is the truth. I mean, not only are they, it's a, it's a, well, let me backpedal there. So RVs and boats, they're these long terms. So on a gap policy, it's truncated to basically fulfill uh, a front end side, right? Or they're pushing the right. majority of that depreciation value, blah, blah, blah. So, but on these, they do not. So it's like this very limited gap policy. Their barriers are different. And ultimately, you know, the majority of the insurance binders that we see are thousand dollar deductibles. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a good premium. That's what I carry on my camper. It's a, I mean, but in order to get it from your state farm or your farmers or whatever, they don't have that. With mine or with the ones I think that you guys sell as well, not only is it going to guarantee that gap, the, the difference of what that claim has been made on that from your insurance company, but it'll pay up to that $1,000 deductible right. as well. Those others do not. I have flipped more people in that comment alone than anything else because, you know, it just because somebody wrecked into yours, you got to pay a thousand bucks. Right. I right. mean, how frustrating is that, right? right. I've, everybody's had it happen. Right. So yeah. titling and registration. You know, we've gotten up to this point, right? We're, I'm packing deals in uh, my, my checklist. I'm going down for both your banks is then we get to that same point. So uh, again, we touched on the MSOs and, and titling uh, of, of that, but each state that we, that we deal in does it completely different. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Department of Revenue on the Kansas side, I mean, there's a reason why they went to a 60-day tag because right. they are horrible. 
I mean, they, somebody had to come in and say, listen, you got to go give these guys longer. And now you got a 60 day temp tag in Kansas. Missouri is still 30, but it's still frustrating. DMVs now all independently run and they, you never get the same answer from anybody you call. I'm going to tell you right now, if you guys, and since we're on camera and we're, we're talking about this in a podcast, on the Missouri side, they got gals down in Butler, Missouri at the DMV, if you haven't already heard this, they are by far the best people to mm -hmm. deal with, period. And I don't care what corner of this state you're coming from, Butler, Missouri, the DMV, they're, they know the law, they know the regulations, they're very good at what they do, and I mean to tell you, they're, I mean, I've had more and more customers that have talked to me about them, and personally, I do my tags in Butler, Missouri, <laughs> and I've lived in Springfield and in Kansas City, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, titling, uh, title applications, and why I bring this up, is because this is after the deal has been done. In most cases, there's a, a week or two, right? Mm -hmm. That's been, uh, that's transpired. So we have already delivered the unit. Everybody's happy, maybe even gone on their first trip. They've been able to use that temporary tag that's been attached to their vehicle. What we then provide them is this is kind of what we were <laughs> laughing about before on some people not caring anymore once the deal has been, you know. So we provide them a title or a manufacturer certificate of origin. We supply them with a bill of sale from either state and we supply them with a title application. And that title application has your name as your bank as the lien holder, your credit union as the lien holder that's put on there. And with that, uh, if it's a sales tax that's been included on that, there's a sales tax check included and that's sent to them UPS. And that's a signature required by us because I can't tell you how many times we have lost stuff in the mail. But so talking about that, we now have uh, two weeks that have gone by. And with Central Bank, I know for because my loan with my camper is through you. And all of a sudden I get a notice from them saying, hey, have you filed this? And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Well, yeah. So let's talk about the, the differences in what we see there. Yep. So what we look for is we'll get that same information from you in the packet. We'll verify that the lien was filed with the state, either Kansas or Missouri, by the dealer. If not, we go file on the backside, which is protecting our interests in there if the customer never steps foot in that DMV and registers their vehicle. So that way we're secure. God forbid it gets the repo status and we got to go get it. We can still get our repo title and take care of what we need to. Um, Kansas is an e-title state. So they hold that title electronically. That's a big change. Some like to hold that paper title. Missouri still issues the paper title with the lien listed on there. Personally, I live in Kansas. I like the Kansas that they're holding the title electronically. It avoids all the lost titles. I don't know where it's at, that information. When you pay it off, we send the lien release to the state. They issue a paper title and there you got a free and clear title. The key for us is that we are placed as a lien holder. We call that perfecting our lien. We're perfected at that point. Again, if we have to take action, we know we can. We can collect our collateral. We can resell that collateral and try to recoup our money on that loan. Um, so, I mean, that's a, a big deal. Um, it's a pretty simple process. Again, the dealer, you do everything. You send them everything, and all I got to do is walk that into the DMV with that information, and they take care of the rest and get them tagged and registered. Um, but again, the society and the country we live in now in the world, not everybody does that. So we Especially have our Especially the guy that didn't put the sales tax on the loan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we safeguard our, ourselves by filing and checking on the backside. Yep. So if we see that the customer hasn't gone in, we send up to six letters just as a reminder. Um, hey, you want to get it registered? You want to get it registered? Mm -hmm. That way we can show our auditors. And when the state comes into audit, we tried. We did everything yep. we could to them besides going and knocking on the door and grabbing them by the hand and taking them down to the DMV right. and doing it. But we're protected on our side. So, I mean, that's just the price of business. It is what it is. World we live in, society we live in, not everybody does it right by right. the law. Uh, but we have those safeguards in place to protect us as yep. a lien holder on there. And you're very much the same. Yep. Uh, I know the difference with you guys, uh, when you do your smart funding, we, we send the documents electronically mm -hmm. to the credit union through Cuddle. Uh, but the same things that you get, uh, the, the, yeah. the title or MSO, the, the title application, bill of sale. Uh, in, in addition, though, you guys want to know that your dealers are calling in on 
either side, uh, the Department of Revenue, mm -hmm. and doing what's considered a, a notice of lien, right. and that that has been placed with that state that is, is right. done. We do it anyway because it charts us, and mm -hmm. we have to report it at the end of the month anyway on a notice of sale. Right. But go ahead and tell them what the difference of that makes in a deal. Yeah, so so uh, with when we get that paperwork, we, we know from uh, going through the paperwork that you have filed our lien for us. Okay, you have filed it with the proper state that the that the the member is going to be living in, and so that protects us. Just like like he said, it, it protects our collateral that we have uh, a, a lien on that. What it, if they don't ever go in to register the vehicle and, and that sort of thing, we're still protected uh, within there, and we can get a repo title if that ever come to to that point. And, and so that does help us. It helps us uh, speed things up. You know, you take care of, we know that the dealer is, because uh, the dealer is actually owning that contract, right, until until we fund it. And so we, uh, you telling uh, the state that uh, Mazuma Credit Union is going to be the lien holder on it, and you register it, we get that proof from you, we have it in our file, done. I'm done with it. Yeah. That's right. It, it, so it does make it easy, and again, fast, quick, and easy. That's what we're, we're trying to get to. Okay, so uh, lastly, I guess in in the progression of getting an RV loan at the at your dealer, uh, you know how that's done. Ultimately, we get them down to a payment. Payments the the deal. So, I know as a member of Mizuma Credit Union, there's advantages there for them to to come to us. You offer my customer a 25 basis points or a quarter mm -hmm. point discount to do a automatic payment each mm -hmm. month. Um, when in fact makes more sense because in order for my customer to become, to get the loan through your credit union, uh, you take a small proceed, not a lot, but from you hold a proceed from the dealer that pays for a savings account, right, mm -hmm. into that. So let's go ahead and talk what that looks like for you guys getting that payment ready. Sure, uh, absolutely. So uh, if you're not a member of Mazuma and you and you do the financing through Mazuma, what, when when you submit all the loan documents, you you take care of uh, some uh, also some documents that we need to open up the account. Uh, one of that is the signature card and our member due diligence. Um, so we get that information over to us and then when we in the process of uh, of funding the the deal and putting the, the the loan on the books we have to open up an account uh, that account allows you to be a member uh, and then and and with Mazuma Credit Union it's only it's a dollar uh, we put a dollar into a, a, an account uh, in what we call a primary share account that allows you to take full advantage of all the services that Mazuma has then we book that loan under that that account um, and then you're but just just to make clear though, mm -hmm. it, they're not obligated to utilize that to, in order to get that loan. Oh, it's no. just part uh, of being. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, once once you uh, are a member, now you have full full uh, access to all of uh, uh, the other services that we do have, and then and then we give the discount uh, on the rate be, uh, for a um, to do automatic payments either from a Mazuma account or an outside account. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just more of efficiency. Uh, standpoint and we want to make sure that we're uh, giving that uh, incentive back to the member uh, to, to have that efficiency and so forth and uh, and then there's other services that we do and discounts that we can go and go lots in the end of that when it comes to statements and all that other stuff but but yeah that's how it's a little different than than with uh, with a bank um, we have you have to actually get that account open before we can actually do the services and 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 you 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 take care of that here at the dealership so the 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 customer here at the dealership doesn't have to go to the branch open up account and then do the loan but we we all take care of it all and I'm, I'm happy to do it because in fact you know I rarely I don't know that I've ever done a loan actually with you guys that I didn't put it on there Right. I mean, it's a quarter point off your rate. I right, mean, yeah. you're going to pay this payment right. <laughs> regardless. So right. uh, it just makes sense. But and now with you guys, uh, you're still old school mm -hmm. because two weeks after that loan gets initiated, you're getting a payment book. That's right. We're, <laughs> we're still the old coupon payment book. Like, you I, know, it's, I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny. Some like it, some don't. It's that old school, new school. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, you know, and it's it's interesting, but because 
the cost to the bank, because I brought this up in our holding company, to produce these payment booklets, right. and we're talking an RV loan, 180 15 months. Year, 180 of those yeah. things. And, you know, it's three well, envelopes, it's right? It's three of them, yeah. I mean, it's so, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane, because it's 60 month booklets, yeah. you know? So we're producing these things. So I've been pressing to say, why can't we do like an e-statement? Mm -hmm. We do it on our yeah. checking accounts. They can opt in if they want to. That way it's electronic. They can view it each month. They can still go online and view their account. Um, but I just think the payment booklet, but then you hear a lot that say they like that. They like having that payment booklet and tearing that coupon right. on and keeping Even track. Even the young people I found Even the young too. Do. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it's, I would just wish we had that option though. If we could give them either. If you want a coupon book, okay. But if you want to do electronic, yeah. and then after we gave that some time, and we saw, okay, we got way more electronic, well, let's make that move. You know, yeah. it's gotta save us money than the mailing everything on top, but you know, if that's how they wanna do it and if things get lost in the mail, then we gotta reorder another one. And it's, uh, it is interesting. I was surprised that when I came aboard that we were still doing payment booklets, but. We, we hey, still I do, mean, we just still do some too when people that just wanna have those. Absolutely, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they will request it. And that's fine, I mean, yeah. I, I just think we need, again, evolve with the time, you know what I mean, and get with our, our fax funding. I will say and, that both of your guys' institutions have great uh, website uh, yeah. for payments, mm -hmm. electronic payments. Yeah. I mean, yours specifically, especially when you got multiple accounts yep. with them like I do, that makes it very easy for me. Yep. I don't have to really do anything, you know. Uh, but what I like best and I highly recommend to all of my customers is to do that. If for no other reason, just to monitor your own account, number Absolutely. one. And because it's always beneficial. Again, we've talked quite a bit on these long-term loans, but it's still, again, it's an accrued loan. And this means that if you know values and you know depreciations, a good way to offset that is going to be making principal payments. Mm -hmm. Both of your banks allow 100% of that to go onto the backside or to the principal to that loan. Your bank, I know for a fact, it's got a specific place. So mm -hmm. I will tell my customers to set up an online account. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, if they don't like doing it that way, if they want to guard their money, but you can go on and you can check your account. Yep. You can always do that. Unless you're writing it out on a check, on a payment book, you know, uh, or you set it up to an ACH for a certain amount, that means that you're not making a principal payment. Right. Unless you set it up that right. way, which you can in yours. But mm -hmm. I tell them that go ahead and, you know, if they've got a 250 payment, you know, if it looks like they can make $300, I mean, now you're making, you know, 14, 15 payments in a year. Mm -hmm. And in the first two years of a loan, that's, that's right. huge. So yep. both of those are great for payments mm -hmm. with you guys. And then finally, it's easy as well um, at, at sale or trade to know if you've got that communication mm -hmm. with your bank or with your credit union that you can call them up and say, hey, listen, you know, where am I at here? What's right. it gonna take to pay this thing off? Or mm -hmm. you know, what's my value now if I'm gonna trade it in? So, and both you guys are good with that. Both banks are. Yep. All right, guys. So um, again, I appreciate both of you guys coming out today. I think we got onto some really good topics from start to finish on, on how we do RV loans at the dealership, how you guys look at them at, at the banks and the credit unions. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate you coming out. Um, I do think it was informational. I think people that do want to know about RV loans uh, that, you know, we've got some great lending sources right here in Kansas Absolutely. City for our, for our customers. Absolutely. Um, with that, I guess we're going to sign off. And uh, again, I'm J.E. Cornwell with KCRVs. And uh, that is a wrap for, what is the name of this kind of thing? I think it's called Out and About. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you Out and About. <laughs>